back to Youth in Agriculture. My name is Marion Munyao Nganga and today we have just joined us. We are talking about rabbits. Yes, we have so many breeds in this place from the Havana to the New Zealand, California white. Name it, it is here. And Marcy has been telling us this story. Marcy, welcome again. Thank you. So, so, karibu sana. so mm -hmm. in the first part of the show, you've mentioned a lot about the breeds. Yes. Let's talk about now how to put them in their cages because there's a lot of breeding that guys get wrong because guys at times mix the generations. Mm. Take us through. One of the things that any animal farmer would mm -hmm. need to be careful about mm -hmm. is something called inbreeding. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, where relations are breeding amongst themselves yeah for example like a father breeding a daughter a mother breeding a son so you find that with that the offspring is normally very weak and prone to diseases and mm -hmm. they die very fast yeah so one of the things we need to do is to ensure that your records are very clear mm -hmm. for example when we have our cages here are all of them are numbered so we know where the mothers are we know where the fathers are mm -hmm. we don't mix them up we know the dates for breeding mm -hmm. we know by the time if, we, if I have an offspring here, I know who the father is and who the mother is. And that ensures that I will not mix that generation with their father or that generation with their mother. Mm. Because that is one of the reasons why we start having low quality breeds yeah, yeah. in the market and also in our farms. Mm. And with the, with the, if we keep them in our farms, mm. it ensures that, I mean, we'll always have mm. issues like mortality issues, sicknesses mm. and diseases. Mm. Now, is there a reason or a structure on which you take maybe the father 10 meters away from the daughter? Because <laughs> <laughs> clearly yours are just jumping, jumping. No, they are all caged. Mm -hmm. Each one of them has its cage. Mm -hmm. So I know the dates for breeding. Mm -hmm. I know who will breed with who. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I know each one, each one belongs to their cage. Everyone, yeah. especially the mother, all the mothers have their own homes. All the fathers have their own homes. Oh. So yes. So uh, after breeding, yeah. I know who bred who, and I'm also able to take care of. Uh, if I'm if I have any challenges, yeah. especially getting to know who has a problem, is it the mother or the father? If mm. maybe I bred and they did not give birth, yeah. it could be a problem with the father or the mother also. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh -huh, mm -hmm. what I'm getting from is that all fathers stay in one cage, definitely in their own cage. In their own. Each, yeah. Each cage, like yes, one each separate... father has its cage, each mother has her cage. Those are so many cages. Yes, that's why you have this. So many. And they, yeah. do they stay ground floor? <laughs> 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 Which floor do their fathers and mothers stay? <laughs> They all have their designated places, yeah. which helps me to know who stays where. Uh -huh. Then I have a place where by the time I'm, I'm winning the kids from their mother, yeah. they have a place where they're going to. Do, so, mm -hmm. so after some time, mm -hmm. after three to four months, mm -hmm. then I sex them again. I separate the males from the females mm. because there's also a possibility of at that point, the, the brother and the sister, sister can meet and then yeah. I have weak offspring. So the girls stay together. The girls stay together. The boys, stay boys together. Can, can cousins stay together. Girl cousins. Yes, they can stay together. Yeah. Yes. As long as they are, t they are the same gender, they can stay together. Then at that point, we are able to pick the ones which are going to be the next set of breeders. Yeah. Yes. Then the others, we, we preserve them for meat. The mating period. Eh? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it occurs after how many months? So a mother, eh. uh, the gestation period is 28 days. Yeah. So if I mate one today, eh. After exactly 28, 31 days, yeah. she's going to give, give birth. birth. Yeah, definitely. After she gives birth, yeah. I, she stays with her kids for two months. One and a half to two months, she's ready yeah. to be served again. Ooh. Yes. So in a, a in a period time. of one year, <laughs> in a period of one year, she can give birth to four. She can give birth four times. Now let's talk about the the giving birth. How as a farmer, how should you handle that? Is it that you need cotton wool around them? Ama, what kind of caring measures do you give them? Um, the, mm. the gestation period is 28 yeah. to 31 days. Mm. So at around 20 days, I introduce a nesting cage. A nesting cage yeah. helps the mother get used to that small environment, mm. but she can give birth to her kids there, mm. and then she's able to take care of them from there. That helps her to keep the kids away from other predators, and also they're kept together and they stay warm there. Mm. So at around 26 days, mm. she'll start removing fur from her body to create a nice nest wow. for the kids. Yes. Really? Yeah. So they go like furless. 
Yeah, yeah. They, they remove some fur from their bodies. Oh, not so. so. that mm -hmm. you are, actually, it's the first sign that you know that she's about to be in labor. Yeah. So when she starts removing the fur, you know that it's about time. As you can see, that one. She just, that one that, that was there that removed the fur. And oh. now she gave birth just this morning. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> As a farmer, again, how do you ensure that the bunnies are in good health, they are okay, no one has been eaten, and why do they get eaten? <laughs> what happens mm -hmm. is, if a mother gives birth and the mother is not taken care of, yeah. her first source of food or, you know, water will be from her own kids. So many of them will give birth and they'll be okay. But if she doesn't, she looks around and there's no food, there's no water, or she feels threatened, for whatever reason, for example, if a cat passes by yeah. or if a dog barks and she feels threatened, the first thing she's going to do is to eat her kids. Yeah, they eat their kids to protect them from the... That's so mean. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, hey, okay. Mm -hmm. And then? So one of the things that we have to do is to ensure that we, we do not interfere with the natural process. Mm. We just ensure that she has food and she has water mm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we'll check once in a while to check if the kids are okay, they are all feeding. And how we know that they are all feeding is that their stomachs will be full. Yeah. You'll find a, a bloated place <laughs> in their abdomen. Kitambi, a.k.a. Kitambi. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, fine. And as a farmer, how should you handle them? Well, of course, you want to touch them to check, check if they are alive or sleeping. What we do is we use mm. gloves. gloves. We use gloves mm. and we have to touch the mother to get that smell from the mother so that we can touch the kids. Mm. Because if the mother smells the kids and feels that this is a strange smell, she's going to reject them. And how she rejects them is by refusing to feed them or to eat them, to attack them like they're predators. So how, that's how we ensure that we do not introduce strange smells mm. to their house. Meaning even a farmer should not be maybe a fan of perfumes. <laughs> well, they are, no, I'm just assuming. You think yeah? that I didn't have any perfume, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's actually very true. Uh, yeah. When you come in and you introduce a strange smell, uh, they get very anxious. Okay. So how we ensure that we don't bring strange smells is like if you want to, we can actually sometimes we even use onion, the onion smell. We touch the mother, then we touch the kids with that, because the mm. skin normally doesn't have fur the first the first week or so. Mm. They don't have fur, mm. so the smell really touches them. Mm. So that's how we ensure that they do not, they do not wow. feel a strange smell. <laughs> wow, now let's touch a little bit on the feeds. What mm -hmm. do you feed them with? They are normally fed mm -hmm. on uh, vegetables, yeah. um, the dry vegetables and water. And we also, because we do commercial rabbit farming, mm. we normally also give them pellets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the grass that you I've seen you give them is dry. Dry hair. It doesn't choke them or? No, no, no. It actually helps them to digest the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the cabbage and the carrots that other farmers give rabbits? Is that okay? That is okay, mm -hmm. but it also depends on what is the purpose and, and how many they are. Mm -hmm. uh, are we able to sustain carrots in no. a stock of around 400? No. Mm. Every day? No. Mm. no. So what mm -hmm. we do, <laughs> mm -hmm. we are not able to sustain that. So what we normally do is yeah. we give them dry hay. We give mm -hmm. them hay and pellets. Mm -hmm. And that is enough nutrition for them to be able to add weight and also to, to digest the food. Challenge number one is diseases, as you had mentioned. Yes. What are the you know, most common diseases that affect the rabbits? One of the most common diseases that mm. affect rabbits is uh, bloating. Wow. And bloating comes when you overfeed them and also when you give them food that has too much moisture content, mm. like carrots and cabbages and those kind of things. They yeah. have to dry. If you give them that, they have only one stomach, so they eat that and they start bloating. You'll just see their stomach getting distended. Mm. And if they're unable to remove the gas from mm. their body, mm. they die. Mm. So what do we do when we have that issue of bloating? There is something we normally, we, we normally give them liquid paraffin yeah. to help yeah. with the digestion. Yes. Yeah. You'll find it in any, any livestock keeper. Yeah. It helps with the digestion. Mm. Yes. Okay, now to the money part of it, my favorite part on this show. Yeah. How much capital can someone start with and how much return can they get after how long? That's a very good question. And because at the end of the day, we are looking for money. So we start with wherever you are at. 
and that means with the housing. The yeah. housing, I think, is the most expensive part of it, and also getting good breeds. As long as you have good breeds, you are assured of good returns. Mm. So that would be a relative term to talk about, but we can talk from, let's say, from 20,000, yeah. you'd be able to have a good house mm -hmm. and some good breeders. Mm. So after after four to five months, mm. you will have kids, right? Yeah. After getting good kids, then they start growing and multiplying. And then every other time, we have to exchange our bucks with other farmers or mm. buy new bucks into mm. the farm. Bucks are the male rabbits. And that is because as they grow, they keep, you know, they keep multiplying. And we have to exchange the bucks so that we have a new breed mm. in the farm. Mm. So uh, where do we get the market from? We sell the rabbit meat. There is a very high demand for rabbit meat. You have to be consistent. You have to be, you know, to sell the high quality meat because again, if you have the low breeds, it means that by the time they add weight, it will have taken a long time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How about the urine? You've missed the urine. So the urine mm -hmm. has a very high demand. Yeah. And we use the urine for the farm, and uh, it works as a foliar, like food for the for the farm, and also as a fertilizer, as a fertilizer, mm. and also as a pesticide. As a pesticide, we normally mix it with water and spray on the plants. Mm. And this helps to ward off pests such as uh, armyworms, aphids, mm. and such other pests mm. in the farm. Mm. Amazing. Now, how much do you sell that rabbit urine for per liter? Per liter, we sell rabbit urine at 100 shillings. We sell rabbit meat at 800 shillings. And, per uh, kg or per rabbit? Per kg. Or per 800 kg. per kg. So what happens is mm. that when you have a rabbit, mm. when you... When you have a rabbit that is two kilograms, yeah. when you dress it, like, that is when you, when you slaughter and remove the skin and the head and the hooves That's and one. the innards, it comes to one yeah. kilogram. Yeah. So one kilogram goes for 800 shillings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, now, what about so the fur? Uh, the the fur is, uh, we also sell it mm -hmm. for other, for people use it for mats, for mats, for small items like passes, shoes, and such other things. Where can people get you? We can get me on in yeah. Tawala. Yeah. We are available on Shamba Connect, on Facebook Shamba Connect, on Instagram Shamba underscore Connect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now look at this camera and give one young farmer, potential rabbit farmer, an advice. Senye hata sahau. I would like to tell all young people aspiring to keep rabbits that it's a good venture to get into because beyond getting the meat that you can be able to sell, you are able to get urine that has a lot of demand you have also manure that has a lot of demand so you're able to utilize almost everything out of the rabbits we also sell the skin and so there's there's almost a hundred percent return on everything that you put in yeah thank you so much well said well put i hope you've you. learned a lot min mesoma story mob sana and one thing i've taken home is you put the father in their own cage <laughs> their mother in her own cage there's nothing like mixing the cages with their parents no because we do not want in breeding we do not want low quality breeds as massimo nene who has been our farmer today has told us thank you so much for keeping us company tonight on the show youth in agriculture remember if you want us to come to your farm please dm us dm us at k10 home underscore at marion underscore the agri producer till next time bye